Hey folks, we're back at this wrecker here. Uh, getting ready to go back to work on the radiator on the truck. Uh, it's not real early in the morning, but I had a wreck I had to go get, so uh, a little bit of a late start. But I uh, wanted to show you a couple things. Got my, my slowing gear actually up beside the, uh, the boom, the, the turret of the boom, I guess you can call it. It's 20 inches wide there. Our gear is 27. And as you can see, it's just a little bit shorter than what the platform is. So size-wise, I think, you know, we're going to be fine. But I just wanted to show you a couple of things and, and something that I'm going to do on this truck. Uh, when a boom bends and when you have too much weight on it, uh, and I, I'm telling you this from experience from uh, some of the military trucks on Fort Bragg, the tank recovery trucks and stuff, which are, are not rated really high, and on their rotators, their boom actually, their cylinder, I'm sorry, actually mounts here and comes back this way, where this one mounts here and comes back this way. But what happens is, is you've got a lot of overhang. And if, if your boom's going to bend, most of the time it's going to bend as close to this cylinder as it can get. And what happens is, if it's a quarter inch at the top, and let's say it's a half inch at the bottom, it's going to crush this half inch long before it ever pulls this quarter apart. And uh, a quarter inch will take a lot more pull than a half inch will crushing. And I've actually seen this happen on a boom that was a quarter on top. And uh, it was just about five eighths on bottom. And it just, it wrinkled the five eighths up like it was, you know, paper. And it was just, they, you know, they was picking up more than what it should have been picking up with that much overhang. So we're going to move this cylinder and this is one of the things about factory wreckers that I don't like a lot uh, it's not a real real long cylinder and it's nice to have a mounted back because you can actually get more lift out of it and uh, you know for a shorter length cylinder but this is what I'm going to do I'm going to actually do away with that cylinder altogether and I'm going to run two cylinders I'm going to remake this, this front section we're going to mount two cylinders and uh, they'll have to be, you know, pretty long, but we're going to bring them up and bring them to the side of the boom. And we'll run two cylinders instead of one, and that's going to kill two birds with one stone. And the reason I say that, it's going to give us, you know, some distance farther out. So that's actually going to strengthen everything up some and uh, for the, the first part. And second, the uh, I don't have any room really for my... For my hydraulic motor or actually it's going to be a gear reduction that runs my planet gear now the planet gear is the gear that goes on the inside of the slew gear that actually turns it and you can see up in the back this hole the cylinder is all in the way but uh i'm gonna you know do away with that and then that'll give me room i'm probably gonna run a 90 degree gearbox it'll actually come up and and back and then my motor will go on the back of the gearbox and uh, that'll give me plenty of clearance. I don't think I can find a gear reduction that's in line. And that's what they used originally where the motor mounts directly into it. But I want to gear it just as low as I can gear it. I don't want this thing turning fast at all. So we'll look into some different gear reduction boxes and see what I can come up with. Uh, I don't have a planet gear for it. The planet gear that was in that machine was actually taken out and used. Uh, because he had one that was wore out and he does have a wore out one but I don't want to use it you know it's really bad so we're either gonna find a part number and get one and then we'll probably have to do some machining and make it work you know on our gear reduction box or I can order a blank uh, machine it and then have it hardened or if it comes to it we'll set up the indexing head and we'll make one and then I'll have it hardened so you know whatever we got to do to to take care of that problem but we're going to line up two cylinders and uh, as you can see I think that's about a four inch cylinder but I'll show you the what I'm talking about on you know the way that I want them out of okay you see where these cylinders are mounted and these are good long cylinders but uh, how close to the end of the boom they are and you know I've got the underreach on there so it's got to pick up a lot of weight but you know so far I think the heaviest thing I picked up, and that was with the boom extended, and it was probably overloaded. Well, I'm sure it was overloaded. Uh, 
was 27,000 pounds. Well, I say that. It was a trailer loaded with 27,000 pounds in the back of it. And uh, so I was picking up it in the trailer too. But I actually had to pick it up and set it over out of a hole. So I've uh, definitely overloaded this thing and, and hadn't had any trouble. I didn't have the boom extended all the way out. But, uh, you know, the closer you can keep it in, the better off you are. And, uh, and you know, when I was talking about the booms bending, I've actually... I think I've actually seen one bend the inside boom, uh, but usually they've been the outside boom. And as you can see on this unit that I built, there's no there's no overlap. You know, you don't have it hanging over, so there's really nothing there on that main boom to bend. You know, all your force is pushing down, so it'd be picking up on the backside, and it's not going to bend anything there, so you don't have to worry about that. So, you know, that's pretty much fail safe, uh, especially when it's in. You know, there's there's not much there to bend. You'll, you know, explode a cylinder or something else would happen before it would bend anything. So, uh, but that's what I'm talking about on our rotator, what we want to do. And I'll let you see the length of the overhang on this. It's, you know, four foot. And, uh, you know, every, I can sit here and tell you that, oh, I'm going to be easy on it. I'm not going to overload it, but I'd be lying to you. Because, uh, you know, when you get on a job, you you do what you have to do to get it done. But uh, but just wanted to show you a couple things, a couple plans I had on this. Uh, we may go over and cut the bottom plate out of that track hoe. Uh, it was a nice, I think it was uh, about 5 eighths, maybe a little thinner plate. We may put on the bottom of that, mount it to slung gear. Of course, slung gear's got to mount to our, our sliding rails of whatever we figure out on that. But, uh, but we'll get started on this soon, but I want to keep working on the truck and but um, anyway, that's our plan. So we've got to come up with two cylinders. And I know where there's some cylinders at, so I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, you know, this gives us a pretty good surface, but we'll have to do some reinforcing and stuff. But we'll come, you know, directly off the front of that. And we'll bring them up to the side. And they'll probably be, I'd say, at least halfway from where that's at to where this is at. I mean, I'll, I'll get it right about in the center somewhere. And... Uh, you know, the farther forward we can get that, the, the stronger it's going to be. But, you know, unless you've got really long cylinders, you're, you're going to lose your lift height. So we want to make sure that we still got that. So we'll unhook it. We'll take the other wrecker and pick it up and down and, you know, get an idea on the on what we want for the height. And uh, we will uh, we'll go from there and I will show you more as I go. And I'm getting ready to get back on this radiator and we're going to get it in there today one way or the other. All right, show you more. Okay, folks, I've got all our pieces cut out. I cut out, I actually cut out six of these, and uh, I'm going to run three on each side. And what I'm going to do, what I've decided to do, of course, they're going to weld right into the side, and this will overlap out. And uh, zoom that out. This will overlap out and bolt in, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move these three quarters of an inch from the front and that'll set the radiator back just a little bit farther give us a little more clearance on top plus that'll help out on our uh, getting there a little bit closer to the fan which won't hurt a thing and uh, I'm gonna get them welded on I've got it cleaned up and we'll get it up in there and get it cleaned up get it painted and get it bolted on there I'm hoping to have it on bolted on tonight anyway show you more Okay, folks, it's dark again. I've got to cut the radiator in. You can see the height of it, hopefully. Uh, I think we're going to be just fine on that. So it worked out just, just like we wanted it. Uh, the brackets, uh, still got some holes to drill, but I've got got four bolts holding it in now. But uh, you can see it worked out pretty good. I think it's going to be fine. And... Uh, yeah, the height is actually better than I thought it was going to be because we're actually a little bit under our radiator cap, so I know we're going to be okay with it. And uh, I know at this rate it's going to take us a long time if I don't get a little more time to work on it, but, you know, I just didn't get a lot of time today. Two days to mount a radiator is not too good, but we'll have some better days. But uh, anyway, till next time, update you when I can. Bye.